Welcome to a Geek's Garage. Today we're going to be working on this uh, server here. We're going to be replacing the CPUs, adding some memory, and just generally speeding it up. No, not really. So here's the deal. Uh, it's cold outside, and the work that I've got to do today can be done inside. So welcome to a Geek's Basement. Um, this will be the only thing that you really see directly of me uh, due to the fact that uh, as you can probably hear in the background, there is a small running data center down here for my day job. This is what uh, helps me make the money that allows me to go out and have the fun with my uh, Dodge Stealth, uh, but it makes a ton of racket in the background. So you won't be seeing me try and do any uh, direct videos um, other than this one, just to explain what we're doing. So. Uh, welcome to the new series, A Geek's Basement, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so now that the front valves are out, let's take a quick look and see what they look like. The intake valves are pretty gummed up, um, and in fact there's a, some really hard 
um, build up on them. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Uh, the exhaust ones looked about like I guess I would expect them to look. A quick internet search seems to imply that this might be valve seals uh, that are leaking oil. And so uh, I guess we're going to be adding that to the list of parts that we need to get. Let's take a quick look at the head. And we flip it over and take a look. What we can see is, again, there's a lot of carbon buildup uh, on the intake side. The uh, exhaust side doesn't seem too, too bad, but there is definitely some really heavy buildup on the, the intake side. This tends to, or leads me to believe that it really might be um, where a lot of the problem is coming from is uh, those valve seals are leaking oil down in um, and causing all sorts of fun and exciting problems. So uh, definitely going to go ahead and put those on a list of parts to order. Let's go get the other side, disassemble it, and see how that one looks. As I was filming this, I kind of came to the conclusion that it probably wasn't exactly clear what it was that I was doing here over and over and over again. So I figured I'd try and uh, video a little bit of this and explain what's going on in here and how the tool works and, and really what's what it is that I'm removing. If you already know this stuff, feel free to skip over it, but I know my little nephew Connor is watching this, so I figure why not make it a little bit explanatory as well and show him what uh, Uncle Mark is doing. So let's start with the basics. What is it that I'm removing? It's this. This is a valve. The valve is used to uh, basically control whether air is getting into the cylinder or exiting the cylinder uh, after it's been uh, burned and exhaust, and that's where your exhaust comes from. The valve is basically assembled like this inside the uh, head. You have the valve, you have the spring, uh, it goes through a guide hole, uh, and then there are two small uh, retaining clips that hold uh, everything together and uh, you know keep the, the pressure on the spring. These retainer clips actually set into a small uh, groove that's on the valve uh, in order to, to keep them in place, kind of like so. And then the spring retainer comes up and slides over them, uh, locking them in place, and then thus locking the retainer from coming off uh, and allowing the spring to be put under pressure. 
So when I use this clamp here, what I'm doing is actually pushing down on the spring, which is pushing the uh, spring retainer down, allowing me to pop off both of those uh, little uh, retainer pins, and then thus uh, disassembling the whole thing. One other thing I'll mention, when you're using the, the C-clamp, basically you're pushing pressure on the, the valve on the backside. And I was originally afraid of scraping them up, uh, so I got a small piece of uh, basically rubber matting or rubber foam. It's fairly thin, but um, it's thick enough that it can go in between the valve and the, the C-clamp uh, so that when I'm uh, compressing on it, it's not scratching up the valve. The other thing it's also doing is reviews of the C-clamp had said that sometimes it would slide around on the valve, and this definitely kept the um, clamp from sliding on the valve um, on the back of here. So now we'll go ahead and actually uh, show the full operation from beginning to end. Basically, uh, you need to put the clamp on and line it up so that the, the back side of the clamp is pushing on the bottom of the valve. And then tighten up the, uh, the top side on the spring retainer so that it's held in place. Uh, once it's kind of being held in place, we'll use the, um, uh, the handle that's provided uh, to really crank down and uh, put pressure onto the spring so that we uh, loosen up those uh, little retainer clips. Once the spring's been compressed enough, we can use a pair of needle nose pliers to get in there and actually remove uh, the, the small little retaining uh, clips that are in there. Uh, when I was doing some research on how this was going to work, one of the suggestions was, was to actually use uh, a magnet. And I, quite frankly, I think a magnet would have worked much better, but I didn't have one. So if you're getting to this point where you're going to do this work, uh, make sure you've got a, a small magnet handy because I think it'll make it a lot easier to take those little parts out. Now that the retainer is out, we can go ahead and remove the pressure from the spring. We'll remove the C-clamp. We can remove the spring as well as the spring retainer. And then push the valve through. And that's it. While I am planning on replacing all of these, I am uh, setting them aside um, in order so that I know which uh, hole they came out of just in case I need to go back uh, and take a look at anything uh, specific around them. Taking a closer look at the clamp what you'll see is there is a um, one side is fixed this is what's actually pushing against the back side of the valve um, and then this is the part that I'm using to uh, crank down on the spring retainer and push down on the spring as you can see, it's getting um, tighter and tighter, so it pushes down on the spring, and then obviously once the parts are out, uh, you can spin it back to remove it and release the pressure on the spring. So let's go ahead and remove the last one here. One more thing we'll mention while we're actually watching me pull out this last one here. Uh, definitely, definitely use a tool when you're trying to remove those uh, little uh, retainer clips. Uh, you do not want to have a finger in there. If something slips out, uh, you would be very, very injured. And with that, the last valve is out. So now with all of the valves out, let's go ahead and take a look at how the valves from the reverse side look. There's definitely less carbon buildup on the intake side, uh, and the exhaust side look to be about the same. That being said, they're all definitely very black and very dirty, uh, so I really do think I'm going to go ahead and um, replace all of these. Taking a look at the bottom of the head, uh, again you can see just a lot of uh, buildup and carbon. These are going to be need to be really well cleaned, uh, and I'm going to need to look into seeing what I can do about uh, possibly getting them refinished. At least I've seen uh, some people who do something that sort of uh, cleans up that edge so that it's uh, nice and clean and, and it seals well. So we're going to need to take a look into that, see whether it's something I can do or whether I'm going to need to send it to a machine shop. And that's going to do it for this episode of A Geek's Garage. Uh, we've now completely and totally torn the engine apart. I don't believe there's any uh, thing that I can really tear apart more uh, than we have right now. So uh, with that, we're going to uh, really start working on uh, what parts we're going to order. 
as well as selecting a machine shop to take uh, some of the parts to including the block uh, so that we can get them refinished and cleaned up so stay tuned uh, definitely post any comments below if you saw anything that you noticed that you think um, I didn't pick up on that I should know about please feel free to comment on it below and be sure to like and subscribe and share it with your friends I've got 40 subscribers if I get up to 100, I'm going to make up some stickers and send them out to everybody as a thank you. One last thing before we go. i got to make a, a big shout out to my buddy Derek who made this uh, meme for me. I thought it was absolutely excellent. I had to share it with everybody. So with that, uh, everybody have a great week. See ya.